started Make Life Fun podcast because I needed more fun in my life. When I became a mother, I, for some reason, just put on this like high ponytail, mom jeans, and nose to the ground. I wasn't having fun. It wasn't until I started having fun that it started becoming easy. Fun and mental health go hand in hand for me. I've been in this mental health game my whole life. And mental health as a mom, oh my gosh, huge. I think that healing myself and motherhood has, has to go hand in hand because he is happier and better for it because I've done the work on myself. And it needs to start with you believing in yourself that no matter what is going on around you, that you as a person right now, you are worthy. You are purposeful. You are needed. I feel like I'm finally home. <laughs> I feel like I'm finally in this place where I am happy to be me. I'm happy in my skin and I am so lit up to like help other people. I'm so lit up for other people to experience this because it's what my wish and my mission is for every woman is to find safety within themselves because it took me a long time to get here. Interracial relationship has not always been easy. For me at the beginning of our relationship, I just didn't want to see it. So I just didn't see it because I acted like it wasn't there. And what we focus on is what we get. So if you're not focusing on it, you won't see it. And my husband, though, he was very much aware of it, hyper aware of it. At the beginning there, it was not easy. There was times he was standing up for me because people were calling me the N word. He was standing up for me when guys would just grab my butt. Like, why? I don't even know why somebody would think that was okay. So he, got in a few fist fights trying to protect us, trying to protect me. And I chose not to see it because it was just it's painful to see in an interracial relationship. And I know I didn't always feel supported by his side of the family. I didn't always feel I was wanted, honestly. And so that was always hard. But my husband has always there's always been a place that he knew this is what he wanted. And he's always stood up for me. He's always put our relationship first. And we would not have made it to where we are today if he didn't put his stick in the ground and be like, this is my person. So those people around us now are proud of us. Those people around us now are our biggest cheerleaders because they've seen us make it through the hardest times. They've seen us go from it being hard and thinking that we're not going to make it to we're going to work on us and we're going to make it. And they've watched us like make our dreams into reality. Like, so they can't help but cheer us on the people that at the time were like, oh, this isn't really going to last. But after 11 years of being with the person, you show people. <laughs> Blending our two cultures together was actually the fun part because it was just new and exciting, right? It was something different. And growing up in Idaho, the pool to choose from as far as, let's say, a Black man was very small. And the ones that were that are here, that were here, <laughs> they were the football players, they were the basketball players, they were the man, big man on campus. So it was hard for me to date that big man on campus because they were like, they could have their pick of whoever they wanted. They, they had this like macho man thing and it just wasn't what I was looking for. And so when I met Austin, he made me feel like the most special woman in the world. Like he would do anything and everything to make me smile. Like he always says like, seeing you happy is like my favorite. You happy, food, I'm set. <laughs> and so he has like, since the beginning of time has always like shown me like, I am valuable, like I am lovable and not only lovable, but I am lovable just the way I am. Like he is probably the reason why I have was able to leave the house without a full face of makeup on because he would always tell me until to the point where it's like washed, brainwashed in that Josie, do you not see how beautiful you are? Like, wake up, <laughs> like, look at yourself. Like you don't need that cake full of makeup on. Like I started to believe him. I was able to, to be who I am with him. I was never able to be who I was with anybody else. Our different cultures and like learning each other and finding our way, like that was the fun part. That was the exciting part. But the outside world, that was the hard part. Like I was growing up always called vanilla black. Is that even a thing? Like, you're, are you even black? Are you even white? Like, what are you? Like you speak white, like you don't have an accent. 
So the outside world was always just like push, push, push. But Austin was like my safe place. He was just, you're everything I've ever wanted. You're my dream come true. Like he just spoke life to me. And so we were able to like do that for each other and hold that space for each other that the world was not going to do for us. Raising a mixed child, he is definitely, it's going to be better now than it was for me. I know that to be true, but it's still not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. But the way we've decided to raise our child is our children, if God will bless us with another one. <laughs> um, the way that we're going to do that is with love, not fear. Like we are not going to be fearful of his mistakes. We're not going to be fearful of the person that he chooses to become. We're going to just pour so much love into him. We're just going to pour the love that he feels like he can come back and be that safe space because that's what we did for each other. And that's what helped us survive. So that's the only way that we can see doing for our child, teaching him that hurt people hurt people. A lot of the times, I don't think people even know what they're doing. I don't think they know. I think it's been something they heard along the way from somebody else and it trickles down. So I'm going to teach, we're going to teach our child to educate people. Let's educate them. Instead of being like quick to put up a fist, let's like educate, let's teach them. Let's take this as an opportunity to be like, you know what? You might not know this, but I'm going to tell you something and just love the people that are hurting us because I feel like that's what the world needs most right now. Like right now, more than anything we could possibly need is just more love in the world. And I'm not going to teach my son to hate. I'm just going to teach him to like pour out love. Yes, I'm going to teach him there's ignorance. But yes, I'm going to teach him that people aren't always using their hearts. Like, but it's going to be more love than fear. It's going to be definitely more good than bad. Because I believe, I will say this forever. What you focus on is what you get. What you focus on is what you create to your reality. So if you're focusing on there's going to be those bad people, then you're going to see all bad people. If you're focusing on there's going to be love, there's going to be joy, there's going to be like an abundance of fun, like that's what you're going to get. So not to say that it's not there. Like, I mean, of course there's bad out in the world, but you have that decision. You have that choice to make to focus on the good. And that's what's helped me survive up to this point, turning 34 and being able to feel safe in my skin is focusing on the good, even when it was so bad. So I can't help but think that's the exact same way that I have to foster my child. My life has changed drastically and it's continually always growing, always evolving, always changing. And I believe that I manifested my husband I believe that I manifested him in 2009. Actually, I'm looking at it's on the wall. I found it the other day in one of my um, diaries journals in 2009. I made a list of all the things that I wanted in a life partner and I wrote it down and I surrendered to it. I was able to find almost all of it. I was able to find that in my life partner, somebody who loves my Oso, which is my dog, somebody who loves my family as much as I love my family, somebody who's, who wants to grow, somebody who wants to travel, somebody who wants to have fun, somebody who, like I call it, find it, like find each other, like find that peace, that inner peace. I, yeah, I wanted a family. I wanted a happy marriage. I wanted to have the best sex ever. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the joy. I wanted the fulfillment. Yeah, this list goes on forever. Honestly, my husband, he loves to, and somebody who loves new experiences. And he took all of it was new. Like I never went camping before I met my husband. We went tent camping and I'd never seen the ocean. And he took me to see the ocean for the first time, which sparked my travel bug, which later on, he's like, what did I do? Created a monster. <laughs> Because that became an addiction for me, traveling and trying new experiences. But yeah, he is everything and more. Like he is more than I wrote down on the list. But I do believe knowing what I was willing to accept, knowing what I wanted to feel, definitely helped lead me into the direction of finding Austin. And so I think I am like when it comes to manifesting, I am very good at it. I do it so frequently. It's almost like, almost like an accident, but not an accident because I write down always what I want to, to create. I always write down what my desires are. Like right now I have like four or five 
things that I've written out that I desire that I want to create. And what I do is I write how I want to feel when this happens. I write down like I truly what I desire. And I say I want it to be for the highest good of everybody. I don't want it to just be for my good. I want it to benefit whoever is involved. And then I just allow myself to be guided in a way like I put that out in the world and I just that's why I say it's like magic and it's almost like I'm not doing it because I'm not doing it. I kind of just like feel the guidance and I take that inspired action that is the next best step and I kind of like let go. And I know that's so hard to do when you want and desire something so much, but I've found the more you hold on to something, the less it is likely to happen when you're able to let go of it. It shocks you. It's like magic what happens. My purpose is to love my purpose is to allow myself to receive love. My purpose is to just be that lighthouse. <laughs> My purpose is to shine so brightly and let others know that they are invited to do the same. They're invited to shine. They're invited to heal. They're invited to wake up to their purpose. They're invited to feel safe in their body. That's the one thing like I didn't feel safe in my body for the longest time. I didn't love who I was for the longest time. So I want to show and I want to help and let people know it's possible. It's possible for you to have your dreams come true. It's possible to overcome all that suffering. It's possible to be happy in your own skin. And I know the term self-love gets thrown out so much and it gets thrown around so much. And people are like, what exactly is self-love? Like for me at the beginning, self-love looked like shopping, putting on a cake full of face full of make bond. Like to me, those were the self-love aspects, but that's not self-love. Like for me now, self-love is setting boundaries. It's saying no, not today. Like I can't, I won't. <laughs> Self-love for me is being open to receive the love. Like when people say you are beautiful, like I'm open, thank you. Like when people say your light is shining and thank you for being you, like I could say genuinely thank you, like open to receive that. Whereas before I just was like playing small and like not receiving. And now I am open to receive. I am open to setting these healthy boundaries out of love. Like the boundaries I set are not to hurt anyone, but I can set boundaries in a way that is beneficial for me, beneficial for you. And I say beneficial for you because every no leads to a yes, not only for you, but also the other person. Because if you're not gonna show up wholeheartedly anyway, you might as well say no, so that they can find that person who is gonna show up wholeheartedly. And so my mission is to be that lighthouse, to be that guiding light that shows people like you can have this too, like it is possible for you. I've been through hell and back. <laughs> I've gone through the down as I could possibly go to feeling now on fire with life, feeling on purpose with life. And that is my message for the world is you are worthy of it. You are worthy of having all your dreams come true. Like you're a queen in your own right. And not every day is going to be brilliant, but you're allowed and you're welcome to find the joy in the moments, like find one good thing in every moment, like, and control the things that you can control because so much is out of our control. One of the definitions I read of trauma is that trauma is anything out of your control that hurts you. So we're being traumatized daily because almost everything is out of our control. Everything out in the world is out of our control. The only thing we can control is how we show up. And so doing that healing work on yourself to show up as yourself, to show up happy regardless, like that is work that you will never regret doing. And that's my purpose. The reason why I gave that definition of trauma is anything that is out of your control that hurts you is when I am doing this work and I ask that question, like, where were you traumatized in your childhood? A lot of people don't know because they've either buried it deep or they don't know they were traumatized. They were like, I grew up with two loving parents, like everything was fine. But then you start getting to the heart of it and they're like, well, my dad was drinking, my mom left. Like they start talking about all these things that were out of their control. And yes, that hurt them. And then they're able to start unpacking that and be like, oh my gosh, that hurt me. Because not until you bring that pain to light, not until you acknowledge it for what it is, are you able to heal? And so I am there to help dig deeper. I am there to help you open up and blossom and bloom so that you can do that healing work. And I help people like connect to their bodies because 
Some people don't even know the last time they connected to their body, they're walking on autopilot. They're going from one day to the next day to the next day. They wake up, pop out of bed. The first thing they do is they grab their phone and then it's like information. They're like, go to the coffee pot, make coffee. Their kid wakes up and it's just like you're taken on this roller coaster ride for your day. And what I'm helping my clients do is come home to themselves so that they could be like, no, I'm the voice. Like I'm in charge. Like this is my life. Like I'm going to take control. I'm going to wake up and I'm going to wake up in gratitude. I'm going to talk about all the things that I'm grateful for before my feet hit the ground. I'm going to say, thank you for this day. And then from then, from that moment on, everything that happens, you're going to find and look for the good. It's not going to be easy, but when you're looking for the good, you find the good. And when you're finding the good, it keeps you in the present moment. Like, honestly, it just anchors you in. And so that I think practicing presence is the biggest tool that I give to my clients, because I think only life only happens now, even though we're worried about the future, we're hurt and stuck in the past, but truly life only is happening for us right now. Before I started working with clients, I was working on my family <laughs> and my mother, that was, wow, the biggest, like her boundary setting is, she just tells me, it's like she got her life back. She says that being able to set these boundaries is like, she can't even believe that she went this long without setting these healthy boundaries. For my husband, he has quit drinking, lost 40 pounds on this health kick completely. By other clients, she says that new things are possible. She is showing up in her business live on social, which, would have never happened before, like actually going live and showing up live for other clients. It's just knowing that they can have a life outside of their mothering, like knowing that I can have hobbies, I can have a dream. Like it doesn't have to happen when this parenting journey is over. Like it can coincide. It could be together. And yeah, so it's big transformations. It's kind of mind blowing. Like the fact that this work could do such good letting go just even teaching people to let go and surrender to the present moment that is life giving in itself like i've seen relationships like mend and the connection come back like it's just beautiful <laughs> makes me so happy so right now i am have a wake up winning challenge that launches on the 29th and wake up Wake up winning is all about waking up on purpose, like waking up with your day with the intention to win, with the intention to be in your body, be present. And that wake up winning challenge, I'm so excited for. I have two of my favorite people that are going to be on with me helping speak this message of Let's take control of our minds. Let's take control of our lives and let's wake up winning today so that we can have the, a wonderful week. So then we can have a wonderful month so we can have a wonderful year. And I just think it's such a perfect time for this challenge to be up and going because the year is about to come to an end. So let's like make some commitments. Let's declare how we're going to show up in 2022. And that's what this wake up winning challenge is. And the link for that will be in the show notes. And that's from the 29th through the third. And that will be on Zoom and in a Facebook group. And we're just going to, it's just going to be high vibe. It's going to be all about setting you up for success and setting you up to be open to seeing the good. As far as how people can work with me, I have a maxed out life coaching program that is, again, let's maximize the good. <laughs> let's maximize your life and let's get to work now so that you can start opening to receiving everything that you've always wanted and opening to creating what you've always wanted. And I know healing can be heavy and hard and I had the most healing when I was having fun. So that is my approach to healing is let's have fun while we heal. Let's laugh while we heal. Let's play while we heal. And so a lot of the practices I teach are different than other people because my journey has been different than others. So that max out life will be coming very, very soon as well. That is all in the works and all that information will be on the show notes. And I am just fired up, lit up to help other people just see the beauty that I see in them. You absolutely have to be ready to heal. Like my mom is the prime example and my husband, because I mean, I say that because they're like within my vicinity. So I see it all unfold. But for years, I would tell my husband, like, you're drinking too much. Like, let's 
tone it down. Let's dial it down. And it was just always push back, push back. And for years, I would tell my mom, like, mom, you got to like say no sometimes. Like you can't always pour from an empty cup. Like I would always tell this to her and it was not received. There was a point like within my healing journey, you can't help but want to help other people. And so there was a point where my mom would call all the other kids first and when she was having her issues or a moment, I'd be the last one she calls because I would drop the real truth. Like I will drop the knowledge. And so she wouldn't even call me until like she got everybody else's perspective. And then she's like, okay, now I'm ready to hear it, Josie, let me have it. So I was just joking about that with her the other day. I was like, yeah, because she was talking about my little brother and how he needs to do this and he needs to do that. And I was like, mom, you didn't do that until recently. Like it took you some time to be like, okay, enough is enough. Like I'm ready now. Like show me, teach me. And she keeps asking, teach me, show me. And I'm having so much fun watching her blossom and bloom. And so you had definitely have to be ready. And how you find out you're ready is when, I mean, when you're done hurting, when you're ask yourself, am I done hurting? Like, am I ready for change? Like, do I want to change? Like, ask yourself that question. Do I want to change? Honestly, do I want to feel good? (laughs) Like, that's another question. Like, am I ready to feel good? Am I ready to feel better? Like if the answer is no, then I mean, you're not ready. But if you're like, heck yeah, I am so ready to feel good. I am so ready to have my best life in front of me and live for today. Like I'm ready, then that's how you do it. But you have to be ready for it because I've been on this healing journey, like I said, for a long time. And even though I've had all these tools and I've gone through different counselors, hypnotherapy, I've I mean, like that coaching program, I've gone through five months abroad in Southeast Asia traveling, like I've done so much, but it wasn't until I was 100% ready, did it all begin to show up for me. It takes courage to be healthy in the mind. It takes courage to show up for yourself day in and day out. It takes courage to be like your mind. We've been programming our minds since the beginning of time, before we even knew language, our minds have been being programmed, being conditioned by our surroundings, by our culture, by the people. And it takes so much courage to be like, who is that in my head? Where did that thought come from? No, that is not me. And I'm going to choose a different thought. It takes vigilance. Like you become like the first word that pops in my mind is like, you become the master of your mind. You have to like, literally be like, no, that is not what I'm going to think. No, that is not me. Like, I don't know where that came from. I had to like give mine a name. (laughs) I had to be like, no, Satan. (laughs) Like, no, like that is not, that is not me. And I do not know. And I'm doing that even now, even often. I am, the thoughts want to, your body's like, wants to keep you safe. Your mind wants to protect you. And so for years, we've been teaching it what we need for protection. And so when it comes time to rewire and reprogram your mind to do what you want it to do, it's going to be work and it's going to take courage. And it's, but it becomes fun when you start to be able to be like, catch yourself not doing what you normally do. Like I would beat my husband up for snacking at night. I've been doing that for as long as I could remember. He loves to snack at night and I just would beat him up, beat him up. Once I started being able to be like, my mind's like, yeah, tell him not to eat at night. It's like late. Like we're not eating after nine. My mind's like, enjoy. If that's what you want to do, like you do it. Like being able just to do that, just something that small is like, wow, my mind is definitely shifted because that's not who I would have been before but now that's who I'm going to be now. Or like when it comes to showing up in my business, like I used to just post pictures and I never used to go live and I never used to show my face. I never used to use my voice. And now I'm like, no, I have no reason to hide. Like I am here to help, like telling myself and coaching myself through it. Like, no, people need what you have. Like it's different. Like just those different shifts. is like so big. It's so mind blowing. I think the family one is the biggest one I see so far is like, they're able to accept their family members for who they are. Because once you accept yourself for who you are, you're able to give so much grace to everybody else around you. When you're lit up about something, then you can't help but like they be lit up about it. It's just like a ripple effect. Like your light just starts to grow and that light just heals everybody and everything it comes in contact with. And that's just not in your day-to-day life. That's in your business as well. Like you're able to show up 
differently. You're able to come from a place of abundance, like in yourself, like abundance of joy, abundance of life. And that abundance of joy, just like a ripple effect to every area of your life, honestly. Thanks for listening to the Make Life Fun Show. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave us a review. We are also on YouTube as well. And wherever you like to listen to your podcast, let us know what you love about this show. Because the more you love it, the more other people can enjoy it too. And that ripple effect, right? So I am so glad you are here. Stay blessed by the best. Until next time, we will talk soon.